Basic Blueprint Reading for Welders, Chapter 6, Dimensioning, Part 2. Gary Pace, PECWI, TexasWeldingEngineering.com. Basic Blueprint Reading for Welding by Rick Costin. They wrote this out in Oregon. It's an open source book that was written out there for the community college system, from what I gather. Got all that off their website. If you want to download the book, modify it, do whatever you want with it, it's not a copyright piece of, copyrighted piece of work. It's an entry-level blueprint reading book written for first-year welding students. Um, if you want to find it, just type in Open Oregon Blueprint Reading for Welders in the Google search or whatever search engine you use should take you there. So this is going to be part two of dimensioning. Okay, today we're going to touch on arrowheads, dimensioning figures, isometric dimensioning, orthographic dimensioning. Arrowheads. Arrowheads are placed at each end of a dimension line and they are touching, oh and they also go on leader lines etc. Correctly made arrowheads are about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch in length and are about three times as long as they are wide. Usually they have a slight barb much like a fish hook. To make your drawing look clean use the same style throughout the drawing. So here's what a um, the correct version of a uh, arrowhead is going to look like you guys aren't going to be making drawings but you're reading them dimensioning figures when we dimension figures this is what it's going to look like um, you're going to have the numeral in the middle of the arrows and then um, on the bottom you see that we could have a fraction that's you know a quarter of an inch in height um, the numeral should be an eighth of an inch in height but it just depends on what we've got going on in the size of the drawing. Um, notes are used on drawings to provide supplementary information. They should be brief and carefully worded to avoid being misinterpreted and located on the sketch in an uncrowded area. The leader lines going to the note should usually be kept short. Notes are usually added after a sketch has been dimensioned to avoid interference with the dimensions. So like that hole there up in the upper right hand corner where it says 730 seconds drill so that means we don't chop it out with a error arc or we don't use another method to remove the material they want that hole drilled um, then this other one you know the, they just want it drilled uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch deep or 5 6 uh, deep or on the bo lower right hand corner it's telling you you know an, an eighth of an inch 45 degree chamfer it's, it's giving you an idea of what they want. So a lot of times they'll just put notes on these drawings. Isometric dimensioning. When dimensioning an isometric sketch, it is important to keep dimensions away from the object itself and to place the dimension on the same plane as the surface of the object being dimensioned. You will probably find that to dimension well in isometric will take some practice. We're not going to do that, but we're just reading. So you can see this is an isometric drawing, and it's got dimensioning on it. So here's this is an example of isometric drawing being dimensioned. Orthographic dimensioning. When you look at um, the dovetailed object several pages back, it is easy to see that an isometric sketch can quickly become cluttered with dimensions. Because of this, more complicated sketches and drawings are dimensioned in orthographic. This method provides the best way to dimension clearly and in detail. So instead of trying to dimension in three dimensions, we break it out. Each dimension gets its own, um, each view gets its own dimension. So if we're looking at it from the front, that side gets dimensions. If we're looking at it from the side, that side gets its own dimensions. If we're looking at it from the top, that side gets its own dimensions. We're not trying to do it all in one view like we would with a uh, isometric drawing. So when we're talking orthographic, we're talking when we break it out into three views. Seven general rules to follow when dimensioning. Show enough dimensions so that the intended sizes can be determined without having uh, a workman calculate or assume any distances. State each dimension clearly so it is understood in only one way. Show dimensions between points, lines, or surfaces which may have a necessary relationship to each other or which control 
the location of other components or mating parts. Select or arrange dimensions to avoid accumulations of dimensions that may cause unsatisfactory mating of parts. In other words, provide for a buildup of tolerances, um, and we'll, we'll touch base on that maybe. Um, show each dimension only once. We don't duplicate dimensions. We don't put a dimension on the front view and the top view and then another one on the side view. Um, where possible, each dimension feature in each view where it appears most clearly and where, it, where its true shape appears. When possible, specify dimensions to make use of readily available materials, parts, and tools. So this is relatively clean dimensioning and what it should look like. All right, so we covered arrowheads, dimensioning figures, isometric dimensioning, and orthographic dimensioning. All right, take care. Peace out.